Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. This week, we'll learn about the online and innovative learning opportunities offered at universities throughout the state system. But first, we'll hear from Bloomsburg University Professor of Instructional Technology, Carl Kapp. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of Pennsylvania's State System of Higher Education, and welcome to another show, Infinite Opportunities. This is our chance to tell the story of the 14 great universities that make up the Pennsylvania state system of higher education, scattered all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and now number over 100,000 students strong. Today, we're really delighted to have the opportunity to bring to you some of the folks who make our system work. One of those is with us today, Dr. Carl Kopp. Dr. Kopp, it works at Bloomsburg University, one of our outstanding and stellar universities. He brings a host of experience to his job, and his area of expertise lies in online education, e-learning, and uh, gamification. So we're going to hear a little bit more about all of those things during the course of this segment. But first of all, I want to welcome you to our program, Infinite Opportunities, Dr. Kopp. Thank you. It's great to be here. Gamification. Yes. It's something that you work with every day, and yet it's a word that is new probably to most of our viewers. Most viewers understand the idea of online education, but e-learning and programs like uh, gamification are a little bit different turf for most of our viewers. Can you tell us a little bit about those things? Yes. Uh, let me start with gamification. So gamification is the use of game elements in non-game environments. So one frequent one that lots of people are familiar with are points that you earn through the airlines. But the gamification really can be broken further down into two elements. One is content gamification, where you change content to be more game-like. So maybe you start class with a challenge, or maybe you put it in the context of a role play, or something along those lines. The other is structural gamification, where you get points if you answer a question, watch a video, those kind of things. So there's widespread agreement on kind of what gamification is. There's not so much widespread agreement on the implementation of gamification, but there's lots of different ways to do it to draw in learners. And the thing to keep in mind is gamification is about the engagement elements of the design of games, not necessarily having fun and laughing and all that kind of stuff. It's really what parts of games draw in people and can we do the same thing to draw learners in, for example, in an online learning environment or even in a classroom environment. So we do a lot of work in using the design principles of games to make the learning more engaging. That's fascinating. And you also are not only a professor, but you also serve as the director of Bloomsburg's Institute for Interactive Technologies. This is an organization that you oversee that does a great deal of work with both the public and the private sectors. Tell us a little bit about the institute and its work. Yes, yeah, so the institute is our um, sometimes we call it our commercial arm of our department. So what the institute does, it's faculty members, staff, and more, most importantly, students who go into the um, community and work with organizations like the Pennsylvania Department of Public Welfare, Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence. We've worked with Kellogg's, Black & Decker. And what happens is we go into the organization, and the organization typically has a learning problem that they need to solve. Maybe that um, some of the people that work there are retiring and they need to capture that knowledge or they need safety for people coming into the plant or they need sales training and what we do is we get with the students and with the um, customer and we talk about what their needs are and we design the instruction to meet those specific needs and it's wonderful for the students because the students get a real life chance to work with people in the community. And so when they go to look for a job, somebody says, what would you do theoretically if a client didn't get back to you on time? And they can say, well, wait a minute, we did have a client, they didn't get back to us on time, and so here's what we did. So it really gives them that touchstone with what's happening in the field and gives them really good experience. So when we have a meeting with the client, the students are in that meeting. When the client calls and the client's not very happy or they're thrilled, the students are there to hear that. And what happens is we give the students more and more opportunity to work with the client, but they always have the safety net of the faculty and the staff at the university. So it's almost like an apprenticeship experience where they're working under knowledgeable faculty and staff who kind of help them navigate through this process. 
And so what we found is it's really helpful when they go to interview because they have the skills and the knowledge, not just technically of how to develop online instruction or how to create that, but actually how to navigate the relationship with the client, what the client says, and how to react to the client. So it's a really powerful experience for the students. Well, we really find this fascinating in the world of higher education and important, obviously. And yet, it's all still, if you post it up against the timeline of mankind, a relatively <laughs> new phenomena. I hate to date myself, but I remember when I walked into my first fifth grade classroom as a teacher, and there were no computers in the entire elementary uh, school that I was working in. And look where we are today. Has there been, uh, during that timeline, the development of research that supports these kinds of efforts and make certain that we're headed in the right direction as we employ them in our system? Yeah, there's a, there's a huge body of research both on game-based learning as well as uh, e-learning. In fact, the Department of Education at the U.S. level did a study about online learning versus classroom instruction and found a slight advantage to online learning, primarily because students tended to spend more time on task in online learning. And what we're discovering is certain ways to use it effectively. So when online learning first came out, it was kind of like, here's all this information, almost like a dump of content. But we've now gotten smarter about discussion boards, we've gotten smarter about the use of video, we've gotten smarter about how to interact with the learners from a faculty perspective, and we've gotten smarter in how to make more interactive experiences. So online learning is no longer just looking at PowerPoint with the voiceover, but it's interactivity, it's engagement, it's things that really draw the learner in. And the nice thing is the learner can do it whenever. So now that it's available on a mobile device, you could be waiting in the grocery store and say, hmm, I don't remember what that concept was. And you could look at the concept while you're waiting to check out, something that you couldn't do you know, 10, 15 years ago. Now, not everybody's going to do that, but you have that opportunity to learn wherever and whenever you'd like and bring learning to you in your own time and your own pace. Dr. Kopp, of course, we have hundreds and hundreds of traditional colleges and universities spread all across the United States, not to mention the rest of the world. And a lot of people wonder, what is the future of the traditional side of higher education as we do morph significantly into the world of distance education and e-learning? What's your take on that? Mm -hmm. I think it's really kind of interesting. If we look at the history of education, it started out as apprenticeships, and someone would study under a master, and then it became a little bit more industrialized, and we have uh, lots of people learning from one person. But technology now allows us to do that with the videos and things like that. And so what I think is happening is what I call experiential or apprenticeship-based scalability of learning. And so we have, for example, a corporate advisory council that comes to campus uh, twice a year and evaluates our students. So in the classroom, I form students into teams, and then I have the students uh, respond to a request for proposal. And the students then present to this corporate advisory council, which give them the experience of interacting with corporate professionals. So I think one of the things is this kind of apprenticeship model. Another thing that we've done on campus is we've taken students to conferences, to industry conferences. And what that does, and, and you can never get that from an online experience, but what it does is you're there with a faculty member who guides you through the conference, who introduces you to luminaries in the field, who gives you the experience of interacting with these corporate people. And we even had students show off the online learning modules they developed. And one of our students won first place in the student award category, which was really exciting. So I think land-based universities are going to be more experientially focused in an area uh, where you can't get that from an online experience. You'll study with experts who will say, you know, here's how you would do that, here's how you would do this. Because one of the things that you can never get online is that look of confusion where a faculty member can step in and answer the question or the reassuring pat on the back that, you know what, you're going to make it through this even though it's really difficult. And what it's going to be is project-based, experience-based, leadership-based where the faculty will lead the students through really interesting and relevant experiences related to their career. Well, I've been around a long time, so I'm almost afraid to ask this last question, but what do you think the future of online learning, e-learning, holds for us right, in this that's, country that's a great and in the question. world? Yeah, lots of really exciting things, I think. One is definitely mobile, so learning anytime, anywhere. 
Two, I think, is adaptive learning. So pretty soon, it'll say, oh, Carl seems to have trouble on this particular concept, so let's give him more information here. Oh, Carl knows that concept, so we don't need to spend a lot of time there. The other thing I think, and this is, um, I think um, someone said the future's already here, it's just not evenly distributed. So a while back, we had this 3D virtual world. Second Life was a good example, mm -hmm. and then it kind of went away. I think that's going to come back. So you have these virtual experiences where you go to a foreign country to learn the language, where you can go into a laboratory and do experiments, where you can interact with people from around the world in these kind of 3D environments. So well, I think it really is exciting. And, and uh, what the future holds for our students now and well into the future is remarkable and, and really truly exciting. And we want to thank you, uh, Dr. Carl Kopp, for being. Uh, here with us today and sharing some of your expertise, but more importantly, thank you for what you continue to do for the students at Bloomsburg University and our system and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. professors, all of them. They know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Clarion University to find out how online programs offer opportunities to students both in and out of the classroom. Can online learning equate to on-ground practices? Can students actually learn as much, if not more? Here at Clarion University, we have uh, two different headcounts, if you will. One is for those students who are strictly seeking an online degree. We also have about 2,300 students that are taking courses as part of their on-ground supplements. The online program has benefited them in terms of offering that flexibility that on-campus learners don't have. You know, the typical person who enrolls in an online class is someone who's really looking for flexibility. But it's someone who needs to take a class that will allow them to take it at any point in the day, that they can access it at any point. Most of the interaction and communication is over the computer, um, sometimes even over Skype or whatever um, web chat the professor offers. Online learners are different than traditional learners um, in the case of just how much work they really have to put into getting their education. Uh, when students get in there, uh, they discover very quickly that um, it's a lot of work. The professor's not reminding them every week of, you know, this quiz is due or you need, you need to submit this. There are still deadlines. You still have to post your assignments by a certain day. You will still have group work. You will still have projects that you have to do. You have to be in your weekly discussions and they have to be done by a certain day. Um, they really have to be motivated to check their due dates and to get their work done and really have the self-management and the discipline to do it um, and do well at it. Well, in 2010, uh, the Department of Education actually did a meta-analysis, which is where they take all the research that had been done in online learning, and the results of that meta-analysis shocked a lot of people. And the reason it shocked a lot of people was that, uh, clearly, online learning actually demonstrated to be a far superior product students graduating with better outcomes, better knowledge, better content than those that were getting the same course on ground. The best modality for learning, however, was neither either or. It was actually a blending of the two. Some students do choose to take online classes on top of their regular on-campus classes, um, and that's per usually for students who either um, just want to get ahead in their degree and graduate earlier, or for those who just want the convenience of not having to go to class every week. The future, I think, for Clarion, and I would say for the uh, state system, is 
tremendous. We are the number one program in the state. We have a number of different awards, including um, we are a military-friendly school, and we have gotten that award the past seven years, um, among other awards that we have within different degrees in our online program. Clarion University will be going forward with more online programming. Uh, this is something that we know we need to do. It's what we're, our students are asking us for, for us to do. Uh, the enrollments are certainly showing that our new programs that we're doing online are increasing. And so you will see Clarion University uh, taking a very large step in that direction. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Kutztown University to see how professors and students connect in real time through online learning. Real time virtual classroom, or what we call RTVC, is technology that allows a student to use a computer and attend class either in the classroom or from a remote location, whether it be their apartment, their house, a hotel room, if they're traveling for business, but they can attend the class using technology via their web browser and even if the students attending in the classroom they often will log in to the web browser also and see the same thing that the student at home is which is the desktop of the professor so whatever the professor is showing on their desktop PowerPoint presentations or software uh, picture that's what the students see whether they're in the classroom logged in with the technology or at home remotely using a web browser the computer science and information technology department started using RTVC with the graduate program and it made sense to start with the computer science department because our courses already utilized a lot of technology in the lectures. And so all we had to do then was incorporate that into the, tech, the RTVC technology and broadcast the, what we were already doing in our lectures and broadcast the existing technology we were using to the students. I personally prefer traditional learning mode because in that mode I have live interaction with my students. Uh, online programs typically uh, don't have that live interaction with the students, but in RTVC mode, this is really great that I can have, I can enjoy both of those things. I have students in front of me and I have students sitting at home. They can ask me questions. So it's a virtual environment, virtual classroom environment for them. Our goal with real-time virtual classroom is for all students to attend when the class is scheduled. But if that's not possible for the student because they're traveling for work or they're sick, then the courses are all archived. So every lecture is archived within the technology and students can listen to the lecture again or listen to it for the first time if they were not able to attend. And this is especially helpful for disability services students. If they can't see everything or hear everything as quick as it's being lectured, they can listen to the archive. This term I'm having a student uh, who is uh, visually impaired. Uh, she, of course, cannot understand all the material in one class uh, sitting. She needs to uh, hear the lecture again. So since the material is archived on D2L, uh, that is a really great feature in RTVC mode. Uh, she can replay that thing at home and listen to the lecture. And if she has any problem, she can ask it any time to the instructor. So that is one wonderful feature that I believe, and it's great help for her. I've had graduate students that are working and travels take them away for a week and they miss class, 
or I've had students that have their jobs transferred them and they are three classes or even one class short of their graduate degree and now real-time virtual classroom can bring them back to Kutztown to finish that one class and get their master's degree. One of the best parts about this flexible program is the ability to stay at home and attend remotely. And I get to stay at home where my computer, computer is configured the way I'd like it to be configured. I have two monitors, so while I'm watching the lecture and I see the faculty member's screen, I also can have my other screen open researching whatever he's talking about. The ability to attend class remotely allows you to free up a lot of your time and kind of focus a little bit more. Sometimes if you have classes all day long on campus, you just need to take a break, maybe sit at your own desk for maybe a comfortable chair. But the remote programs also have the ability for professors to write on the board as if you were in class. It shows up on their screen whether you're at home or in the classroom. So I think the comparison is besides the fact you might be talking via a chat room instead of face to face, it's pretty much the same thing. There are no snow days anymore in our graduate program because students can attend online from their home even when classes are canceled at Kutztown. And we hope to expand upon this RTVC delivery from just the graduate program in computer science to other disciplines, potentially undergraduate areas and undergraduate courses as well. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. Discover the years that will change the rest of your life. Come to a place that is home to different cultures that make us all unique. Embrace the chance to be a better friend, a better leader, a better you. Put your imagination to work in theater and the arts. Shatter records, chase your dreams, be a warrior, create new ideas, discover who you are and how you can make a difference. Discover ESU. I chose Bloomsburg because I liked how the class sizes were a lot smaller. I felt as if you'd get more of a real feel of accounting in the school. The program is known in the local region for just having the best program, the best teachers, and the most qualified staff. Just how great the professors have been really makes me think it was a great decision to come here. Bloomsburg University helps me to unleash. Helps me unleash my inner accountant. was my first choice. My best choice. Because they have what I wanted to study. What I wanted to study. I love my major. I love the professors. It's so much more. So much more than a class. There's a tradition of success. Leadership. Community service. Helping me through my major and bringing about success for my future. Slippy Rock has shown me the world. The Rock prepared me for my job. Slippy Rock University. Experience the difference. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to California University of Pennsylvania to discover how online learning is providing a path for students from where they are to where they want to be. Cal U has been in existence since 1852, providing quality education through top-notch programs. We've taken that model to deliver education online so anyone can succeed at Cal U. We actually offer more than 40 100% online master's, bachelor's, and certificate-based programs. We reach students from ages 20 to 60 and beyond. Whether they want to start or finish an associate, a bachelor's, a master's, or even earn their doctorate degree. It works perfect for my schedule. Teaching all day, doing my lessons, wanting to spend time with both of my, my children. I have a, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. Maybe you got sidetracked years ago and you want to complete your degree. Or maybe you are a career professional who needs a degree like an MBA to get to the next level. Or maybe you just want to learn something new. At Cal U, we have a program that you can succeed in. We want our students to know that we're there to support them every step of the way. When I felt like I wasn't doing well, because I tend to be hard on myself, Professor Tony, he was like, you're doing a great job, keep it up, you know, keep it up. It did make a difference. It's like, okay, okay, I can do this. I can finish this. We have students from coast to coast and nearly a dozen countries around the world. In an electronic environment, we are not limited to where our faculty can reside. So I am able to recruit faculty from all over the country, bringing their expertise to Cal U. If you're an active duty service member, stationed wherever in the world, you can complete your degree 100% online. 
will work around your deployment schedule and be flexible when you can schedule classes. Even if you can't be on campus, we'll provide the same support that you need to succeed. Our program was the first online program at Cal U. We started with a group of 30 students and now we have literally several thousand graduates. We're offering our first doctorate program at Cal U online to reach the type of professionals that are already out there in the field. It's important to incorporate a wide range of media experiences, discussion items that enable students to be able to draw from their own personal experience and bring it back into the classroom. Our students create really tight bonds while they're in our program. And a lot of people would say that an online program, you wouldn't be able to get that tight bond. But in fact, they stay in touch. They go to conferences together. The feedback has been excellent. The students are so appreciative of the flexibility that the online environment allows them to have. They're able to work full time, address family obligations, but still have the opportunity to earn their academic credentials, all within the context of a bricks and mortar institution that has all the resources of a four-year college and university and beyond. When you have the opportunity to go to school and be at home, you need to do it. It opens doors for me right now. Our mission is to provide a quality education that's affordable, that students can attain. So it's like, okay, now I have the master's degree. I'm in control of my destiny right now. Our global online programs will take you from where you are to where you want to be. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities, or visit us online 